This is Andrew for CollectionDX.com taking a look at one of the most anticipated and most delayed items of uh, 2015. This is the Gear Tribe Hatsune Miku GT Project 2014 version. Uh, this is a collaboration between Good Smile Racing and uh, famous mechanical designer Shoji Kawamori because that's right, this thing transforms. But let's just start off looking at the car mode. So this is a fairly large, all-plastic um, BMW race car. Very nice. Uh, absolutely covered with tampograph markings of uh, all the accurate like sponsor decals, the number, and uh, all that jazz. Um, it is a 1 24th scale car, which means it is roughly a little over 7 inches long in car mode. And being 1 24th scale means that you can place it alongside your old school Transformers alternators. Here she is alongside alternators uh, Rodimus. Um, she doesn't have rubber tires and her rims are black because that's true of the actual car, but still, uh, she looks pretty nice alongside um, other large car Transformer things. And she doesn't really come with a lot in the way of accessories. Really, the most thing you need to know is if you pop off this little thing on the bottom here, you just get your fingernail in there, this little white thing comes off, and it allows you to attach the car to the stand. And I'll use that a bit more in robot mode. But for now, let's uh, just start the transformation. I'm going to show you the mid mode, which is not actually covered in the instructions, but it is in all of the promotional material. So the transformation for this toy is actually fairly intuitive. And uh, don't be intimidated by the fact that the instructions are uh, kind of hard to read. Although on the back there uh, is English. So that was very nice of them to do that. It's just that these grayscale photos with the pink highlighting, it doesn't quite, it's not very easy to see in, uh, in real life. But anyway, so first off, we're going to start off by popping off these bumper panels right here. And uh, basically, oops, and uh, basically they just have this little slot here and towards the front and they just go on tab here and a tab here. And eventually these are going to end up on the back as Miku's twin tails. So what you're going to do is just uh, Flick them out like this, and if you want, you can stick them like that on the car spoiler. And again, this is just for the, the mid mode, the sort of gear walk mode of the toy, which, again, they don't actually tell you how to do this in the instructions, but now it has a nice pair of wings on the back. So, to get the legs out, which are almost the entire length of the car mode, you just need to work your finger in here and just start to disengage a bunch of tabs. You need to start off getting uh, basically this whole section here unpegged from the doors and the side of the car. Again, just kind of get your fingernail in there. And you can start to uh, work this thing out. And the legs themselves, uh, they have some tabs going from the inside here into the calves. So you're going to be taking that, just kind of working that out as well. And again, try to make sure you get all of these tabs undone before you start moving big sections out of the way. So you got this out of the way, and now what you can do is there's a peg that goes from this part into the knees, and just kind of take that out. And it also has a, a joint right here. You can also extend her feet, and uh, the way you unlock this is disengage this tab here from the wheel, and just pull this thing out, put her feet out, and just flip this around like that. And then you can take her leg, and you actually rotate it uh, inward around 180 degrees, and now her leg there it goes. It's actually supposed to snap into place is in robot mode. So let me do the other side and then focus on getting the arms out. All right, so we have a toy or well, a toy car with a uh, nice pair of legs. Uh, to finish off the leg stuff, you just need to 
flip this down and inward, there's a peg here and there's basically a little double hinge joint and this will, it doesn't really have a set place it goes into, it's just you sort of just curl this down and then it becomes her Kawamori style hip thingy, because uh, he sure does love doing that on his giant robot designs. Also, you're going to notice, um, she does stand, and it's kind of remarkable, the f despite the, f the fact that, uh, you know, her feet are have these free-moving wheels in the heels. But, yeah, if you can get her to balance properly, she does stand by herself. All right. Um, now, a weird thing about this uh, mid-mode here is there's no instructions, so I'm not really sure how you put the uh, this whole assembly, um, what you're supposed to do with it. So it's just going to kind of have to lay here and flop around on its ball joint. Uh, again, maybe that's why they didn't actually um, give you a way how to do it. They just showed it to you. All right, so you can see her arms are right in here. And similar to the legs, there's just a bunch of tabs that uh, have to be disengaged. So you can disengage. There's a little tiny tab here going from the rearview mirror into the windshield. And that's just kind of on here. Uh, there's also another tab right here on the end uh, that goes from the door to uh, the rear fender right there. So again, you just kind of work things around. And unfortunately, all these beautiful markings uh, tend to get damaged when you're transforming the toy. I have to wonder if uh, maybe some of the problems and delays were due to trying to get these markings to at least survive the building process. But uh, anyway, so when you come under here, the shoulder pads they have a pair of there's a pair of tabs in the hood that are going to uh, get disengaged. And with this out of the way, you can actually flip up the entire front of the car. And here are the arms. This is what's going to become the body. And there's also the shoulder joints right here. So what you're going to do now is uh, work the arms off of the tabs that they go into in the cabin area. Just do it like that. And you can rotate her sh bicep down. You can see it actually has its own joint right here that it rotates on. It's kind of tight on, uh, on some of these toys. So just sort of go slow with that. And uh, when you've got that all set, you can, I believe the door goes like either like this or like that. It's really up to you. But anyway, this will basically lock in place. It uh, actually rises up as it moves back. There's a little bit of an automorph feature there. And let me just do the same thing on this side. So yeah, the, the, again, the shoulder joint's a lot looser on this. It's a lot easier to move it. All right, and all you have to do is just put this back underneath the windshield. Just bring that big tab into place. And again, I'm doing my best guess here that you just leave the um, abdomen just kind of floating down here for a bit. So uh, yeah, it does not quite stand up in this mode, unfortunately. But if you pull out the lovely display stand, which unfortunately isn't clear, they uh, showed it with a clear display stand much earlier in uh, a lot of the promo pictures, which looked like a, an oversized Figma stand but you can just pull this thing out and uh, use it for the gear walk style mid mode. But yeah, it's, um, it's a neat idea that it has a gear walk mode, but again, I'm not sure the toy was really meant to do this. So let's just kind of continue on into the full on robot mode then. So in finishing off the robot mode, here's where a lot of the magic really happens. All right, so we're gonna pop her off of the, the stand. And just set that aside for now. So we're going to uh, bring the the hood back up, or a bonnet if you are someone from another country. And what's going on here is there's just a couple of tabs here. And you just need to uh, work these out of position. And this whole front panel on the car going to move down a little bit. You can see the hinge is right here. And there's a double hinge in here. So it's just going to uh, basically compress the front of the car and it does sort of lock in place. All right, same thing on uh, this side. I would start off with uh, this little uh, tab here in the corner. 
because uh, that one seems to get the most hung up when you're trying to uh, dislodge things. All right, so you're going to do that again. Just uh, bring that down, bring it forward, and uh, watch for tiny flying particles that are the, the remnants <laughs> of uh, all these lovely markings. Because uh, unfortunately they, again, tend to um, get damaged as you're transforming it. And this one is a little, a little tight, trying to get the, the hinge here. You can see there's actually a little, this thing is actually kind of L-shaped. And there is a tab, like, on the inside that it, it more or less uh, walks into. But, yeah, let's, uh, let's try and get that in there. There it goes. Now it's more or less locked in place. Um, and another bit of uh, little parts forming is uh, the spoiler does come off. And I haven't really found a good way to, to take it off. There's basically just a couple of tabs and pegs. Oh, there it goes. So, yeah. And there's only one way you can do it because of how the the pegs and the tabs are arranged on the back here. And you can kind of see right now the uh, the edges of all the lovely tampograph markings, how they're getting uh, just a little frayed by uh, all the movement because uh, this thing actually does split apart. And there's a couple of tabs going through it, and here you go. You have uh, Miku's Twin Tails, and we're going to get back to those in a bit. All right, so uh, this part up here, what you can do is there's a tab that goes into a slot here, and this is forming her main body. So this will all go together, and you can just sort of bring this thing up. Make sure this is all again collapsed into uh, the proper place. It, again, it's hard to to really get everything to cooperate sometimes. Um, but anyway, so you do that and you bring this up, you bring this all together, and you're gonna work her wheel wells around the shoulders, and you're left with something like this, and the head is back here. Um, getting this out, it's a little tricky because uh, there is a tab in the rear windshield that goes right underneath um, the back here and just kind of behind the head. So as you're doing this, you're going to just start off right here undoing that. This part can move a bit if it needs to get out of the way. And just kind of pull this out. Uh, be careful with it. Also, um, these things move. Should have mentioned that before, so that actually helps you get things out of the way. There's, there's like a bunch of different uh, things in here, and uh, there's a main hinge that's going to come back. The problem is, again, just trying to get this to dislodge cleanly. There it goes. Alright, so here is the head. You're going to bring the back windshield in like that. There's a slot here that goes onto this tab. And watch as I bring this up, the actual head of the robot, when it gets tabbed in place, and uh, just let me make sure that's going in the right area. Yeah, it can be hard to do that. All right, there it goes. Now you'll see that the head actually tabbed in over where um, the Miku image is on the front. So I like that. It's like putting the helmet on the driver. But uh, yeah, anyway, so you just sort of position these like this. Find a position where Miku will stand up. And you finish it off by putting in her twin tails. And they're oriented. Again, there's only, the pegs are different sizes, so there's only one way to really put these in just so that the green part is on the inside. All right. And uh, here we go. Gear Tribe Hatsune Miku in robot mode. So in robot mode, Gear Tribe Hatsune Miku has grown considerably uh, to the point where she's now about a foot tall. Again, that's because her legs are almost the entire length of the car. Um, and here she is next to, again, 
the other 124th scale car transformer, alternate is Rodimus, and uh, he looks so small next to her. And it's uh, kind of funny how big she gets. Stay close to me. No, stay close to me. Um, but anyway, so as I'm like manipulating this, you're going to see the, the one major problem with this toy is it needs more robust joints. Um, what she's got back here is uh, she's got like a big old ball joint that's her, her waist. And uh, that's just loose, unfortunately. And she just has these nice big ball joints for her hips as well. And then just a regular uh, single joint on her knees. Uh, she's got a knee swivel, and you saw the thigh swivel before. That's more part of the, the transformation. Um, she's got basic ball-jointed arms that get a little impeded by this whole stuff. Ball-jointed elbows and a ball-jointed wrist. She does not come with alternate hands or any kind of weapon because she's a race car. Uh, <laughs> and also up above, she's got just a ball-jointed neck and the whole platform itself that's under moves as well and a joint that is not very common on Transformers movable twin tails. So, when you're posing her, if uh, you maybe beef up her leg joints a little bit, maybe just put some nail polish inside all the ball joints, uh, and maybe tighten some screws if you can. She, again, she can stand by herself. It's really just a, a question of getting her feet in such a way that she's always kind of, like, uh, the tires are rolling towards her foot so that it, you know, has some friction right there. But, uh, yeah, other than that, you know, and she also has the, the transformation joint uh, in her arm right there. Other than that, she's, um, kind of a, an average transformer, but still an amazingly clean design considering that the entire car, more or less, has folded into about a third the space. Um, it's, it's actually really neat how all that stuff just compresses into her upper torso. I'm not sure if there is a Transformer that's done something similar. Um, if there is, please let me know in the comments, but seeing this actually work as a real figure is just r plain cool, and uh, it's one of the reasons why I was interested in getting this toy. Sure, her twin tails, they are made out of a little bit of parts forming, but I think that's okay, considering that they have to be just big, long panels that, uh, you know, evoke the image of a girl's pigtails. But other than that, you know, it's a, it's a very neat item. Um, I wish it was just a little bit more robust in terms of its joints, in terms of uh, the paint scheme. I almost wish they hadn't done the, all the tampo printing, they had just given you decals, but eh, because uh, I would have just let, left them off, but anyway. Still, she is pretty cool, and uh, again, if you need to make sure she doesn't fall over, you do get this pretty basic stand, which, um, again, it's a Figma stand, or biggest, a uh, Figma style stand, so you could use like a Tom Machine Nation stand in there if you want, and I'm noticing more bits of her markings getting on my uh, backdrop here. So, now where do you get this? Unfortunately, you had to pre-order it, from a Good Smiles online shop uh, way back when it was announced, uh, about a year ago now. Um, and she cost about 8,000 yen, which uh, I think most of that goes into uh, all the markings and probably the BMW license as well. But uh, if you see one and you're a big Transformers fan or you like Hatsune Miku, or you probably like both, you know, this is uh, definitely a very neat and unique item. And uh, I do. I love the design, I'm a big fan of Shoji Kawamori, so it's very cool to see this kind of thing get made. But uh, anyway, this has been Andrew for CollectionDX.com. I'm here, Rodimus is here, and Miku is here. <laughs>